here we have an HP laptop that came in for no power. Laptop is completely dead and it does not power on. The first thing I want to do is check the laptop under the microscope, the motherboard, and see if there's any physical damage anywhere on the board. We're going to be looking for damaged components or burned components or holes in components or discolored components. You know, the usual that we always do. And just like you've seen in many of the videos that I've done, sometimes you can just tell what the problem is by doing physical inspection on the board. And while at it, why don't we check to see if we have a short. But of course, we have to disconnect the battery first. And let's test the positive side of the battery. Red probe on ground and black probe. And 0 0.7, we do not have a short. Okay, so that's step number one. Quick physical inspection. While at it, why don't we test this capacitor for a short? And no short. I mean, the board looks clean and there are no signs of damage, no burn marks, no blown components, no Hiroshima bombs here. How can we tell what the problem is? How can we figure out what the problem is? We're going to inspect the board under a thermal cam to see if we see anything obvious on the thermal camera. When I say something obvious, I mean heat spots, unusual heat spots on the board. Because right now, the board looks clean and no signs of damage anywhere on the board. So before we do any further testing, we're going to check the board under a thermal cam. Now, if the thermal camera does not show us any heat spots on the board, then we have to start measuring and use our brains. Let me just focus it, okay. And let's jump over to the thermal camera. Okay, so one, two, three. Power is on. I turned on the power bank. And look at this. We see a heat spot right over here. This here is not a heat spot, it's just shiny metal. But the true heat spot is right over here. Let me go to manual mode and bump up the temperature boundary so we can focus on the heat spot. And right here. So I'm going to keep my tweezers on top of the hot spot and we'll look at it under the microscope. Where is my tweezers pointing to? here. Now in this area there are three things that can short out. Either this capacitor, this capacitor, or this capacitor. I was pointing down here because of course I cannot be super accurate on which component but I was pointing here. So it's either this, this, or this that could be causing the short. What's on the right of this? Uh, this here is too far. Hotspot was coming from here. So it has to be one of those three. Or it could be something else from here causing a short to show up here in this area. One way to find out. We're going to start measuring. Let's test this side of the capacitor and it's testing good. And we're going to test this side of the capacitor. And it's good. And let's go ahead and test this capacitor here. Capacitor is testing good. So what is the problem?
let's go under the thermal camera again. Right there, short is starting out from from right over here. I mean, the hotspot is pointing to this capacitor here, but the capacitor is not testing for a short. But it's uh, 0 0.17. It's a bit low. Voltage drop is 0 0.1. So look at that. Now it's showing 0 0.7. It's given us different reading every time I test it. There could possibly be something going on with this capacitor. Let me remove it. And we'll test again. Rather than hurt our brains thinking, it only takes a few seconds to remove this capacitor. So let's do it that way. Let's see if we can do it. Yep. And let's inspect under the thermal camera again to see if we still have that heat spot. Hot spot was coming from this area here, so we're going to flip it and we're going to look on this side of the board to see what's going on. So it's this area here. Let's test capacitors at random just to see if we have a short anywhere here. And look at that, we have a short here. The short could be coming from the component itself or it could be coming from the chip here. Yeah, so everything is good except for this capacitor. And this is exactly back of the board where the heat spot is coming from. Let's inspect the board under a thermal cam just to pinpoint where that heat spot is coming from. So the area we are interested in is this area here. One, two, three. Anything heating up and right there, right there, right there. So let's point on this area here and go under the microscope to see what is heating up. And look at that, it's the chip. That's probably why the capacitor is testing for a short. Now, the problem could be the capacitor or it could be the chip. I'm going to start by taking this capacitor off to see if the short is gone. If not, then 100% the problem is from this IC and I do not know what this IC is. I have no idea what this IC is. Let's see. Figure it out. 5X equal 5F. This is probably some type of step down converter or step off converter or some type of a booster. I do not know exactly what this chip does. Let me see if I can find anything with those numbers. Probably not. We may have to look at S manuals to figure out this chip. 5X equal 5F IC. Most likely we're not going to find any results for this. Yeah, nothing. Nothing. So we cannot look for the numbers online. We have to look at uh, S manuals and type in some numbers to see if we can figure this out. If anybody knows what this chip does, leave it down in the comments because it's very likely that the chip is what's causing the problem. I'm going to go ahead and remove the capacitor just to see if the problem may be the capacitor. I highly doubt it, but it only takes a few seconds to remove the capacitor. Okay, so let's test again. I mean, if the capacitor is the problem, that will be awesome because we can get this laptop up and running and send it back to the customer. But if not, then we have to figure out what this chip is, replace it, and then 
send it back to the customer. Meter in diode mode. And we still have a short. We still have a short. The problem is the chip. Let's put this capacitor back. side I want to add some solder onto that pad Okay, so that's it. If anybody knows what 5X equal 5F M1N is, let me know down in the comments so we can finish up this video. We'll probably do a part two when we get hold of that chip. But for now, we're gonna put it on hold. I hope you enjoyed the video and the troubleshooting process. Don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions, and we'll do something else in the next video.